this morning. I'm going to preach differently than probably I might have ever preached in my life. And I've been preaching since I was very young. And I'm going to entitle the message Simply Storm. We're going through things today in America and across the world that we've never been through before. These are different times, stressful times. I want to read the same out of uh, Matthew chapter number 8. Begin with verse number uh, 23. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. Inasmuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea. And there was a great calm. I'm preaching today in a time when we have been through, in the church world, we've been through a time of deception from the pulpits. Not all of them, but some. We've heard for years now all this easy believism. All you got to do is, anybody ever heard that? All you got to do is this. All you got to do is that. Easy believism, you know, pat answers and all of that. But I want to preach this morning, get down where the rubber meets the road. I'm preaching some things today that I've never in a number of years, in the years since some things that I went through, ever since I went through some things a number of years ago. I'm going to be talking about and preaching some things that I've never preached from behind the pulpit before. But I'm going to dare to do it because people need to know that there is an answer, that God is still on the throne. I go to churches I have across America for the last 30 years, this round, 30, more than 30 years now. Churches across America, I'm invited to go to a lot of the churches, especially from about the latter 90s on through present, and I go in these churches, and they have all their programs lined out. Now, God's a God of order and organization. We know that. That goes without saying. But being that I've said that, uh, though we know this, yet we go to these churches. I go to, have gone to these churches over and over again across the little churches, big churches, small towns, country towns, cities. And they have their program, and they've learned how to do this because so-and-so up the road in the great big church, they do it. They're successful because there's a lot of cars on the parking lot. So I'm going to do it the way they do it. Maybe I can get a lot of cars on my parking lot and fill up all the pews. So they start their service. They start their program. And, 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 and I'm not making fun of anybody. Well, I guess in a way I am. Because so much of this stuff, listen to me, is not of God. I've grown up in Pentecost, in the Assemblies of God, it happened to be. Preached in the Assemblies of God beginning when I started preaching at 18 years of age. I have seen a lot of things come and go. I've seen the real thing. You know, a banker doesn't have to study the counterfeit to be able to know it well. He just needs to know the real thing. And then he'll automatically know the counterfeit when it comes across his desk or whatever the case might be. I've seen the real thing. But I go to these churches. They start the service off. They've got a group of people up here, up on their stage, platform, whatever you want to call it. Each one has a microphone. They've got everything written down. They're going to do this particular course 14 and a half times. And everybody now, when we started off, we want you to, everybody do the same thing. And we want you to sway. We're all going to sway. All do it in unison. 
That's the Holy Ghost. Went into a church, Amarillo, Texas. Pastor's dead now. He'd just been to some shindig in another state where they was all having a great big, what they called revival. And a lot of stuff that was going on was not Bible. Folks, if it's not Bible, it's not God. I said, if it's not Bible, it's not God. He'd just come back, and I just had my bus a short time in 97. And I was asleep, and I hadn't finished the walls out and all the installations. So I heard all the noise. They came in on a charter bus from out of state. They'd been down to this thing. And the next morning, Sunday morning, I'm supposed to be the evangelist starting a revival to run for the week and maybe even two weeks. And so the pastor gets up before the church, and I'm sitting right over here about on the pew it was there. And he gets up, and he says, Okay, want well, everybody to stand. Hallelujah. We've been down to so-and-so town in so-and-so state and said, we brought a bunch of that back with us. So everybody stand up. Everybody's standing up. And, and, and I'm not making fun of the man of God. This man should have known better. I had known him for decades. He should have known better. And he got up and actually made this statement. I thought he was going to go back and say he was just joking, but he didn't. He said, everybody start jumping. This will bring down the Holy Ghost. I glanced to my left, and there was a door. Oh, I was tempted to hit that door. Run in, buddy. <laughs> but I didn't do it. I wanted, I thought, I want to be anywhere. With it. And I have got to preach every night after this. That's not God. But there's a real thing, a real move with the Holy Ghost. Let me get going here. We're not. We're in days of, of counterfeits, substitutes, and all of this thing. But I'm going to tell you, the real Holy Ghost, Jesus, through his word, is still real. We can have the real thing. And the, the gospel reaches right down where the rubber meets the road, where we live, where we live. Um, we sing the old songs like, It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Happiness we speak about, we sing about. Peace like a river. Love overflowing. Oh, this Christian life is wonderful. Praise the Lord. Everybody's joyous. We get in the habit of going to church. Everything okay? Oh, we're grinning like a possum. Oh, just doing great, just doing great. Inside we're crying, and on the outside we're lying. We're hurting. I preached for a long time. I would preach on storms. I would preach on bad things happen to good people, just like good things happen to bad people. And I knew a little tiny bit of what I was talking about. But there came a time in my life that I faced real, real storms. There's such a thing as that dwelling place in Jesus. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. And I remember going through some things that like I said, some of this I'm going to share with you. I've never shared with the church congregation before. But it's high time. Psalm 91, one of my favorites. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by doon day. Goes on down and says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but shall not come nigh. The only with thine eyes shall they behold, and see the reward of the wicked. I remember one night, I used to be, before my legs got so bad, I used to be a hiker. I went to Colorado to pastor 51, a little over 51 years ago, 
And I used to strap on a backpack. That was my recreation. I'd take some fishing stuff and a little old pup tent. I'd go a couple of miles off the road or three or four sometimes up those trails way up in the mountains on the stream. I'd camp for a day and night, sometimes two nights, and just get away and just loved it. Still do. I just can't do it anymore. Can't get up there. I don't have a horse or a donkey because I'd have to feed them. Can't go, can't go like I like to go if I had stock to feed, so I don't do that. But I would do that. I remember once when I was in my early 40s, many years ago, I started up a trail and I did not check the weather that day. I did not consult the, I had a Noel weather radio at the time that you could get the local what was going on. I always did that, but this time I didn't. No reason, I just didn't do it. I got off up there and I caught a few brook trout. Anybody know what those are? Well, trout anyway. I had a good time and I built a fire and I baked some of those fish and ate them and went to sleep, went to bed, dozing off, and all of a sudden a clap of thunder started lightning. It came a lightning storm. In the Rocky Mountains, more people are killed. It's a large margin. Uh, more people are killed by lightning than all other sources put together in the Rocky Mountains. I didn't know that until a few years ago I read that. That night, the lightning, I could see through the tent. I could see lightning hitting trees all around me. It's, I knew, and I'll be honest with you, I, I knew that's the night I'm going to die. My ministry, my life is over. I'll never come, I'll never get out of that tent alive. But I didn't want to get out of the tent. I mean, the water started getting about this deep in the tent. It wasn't any use of me trying to get out of it. Where would I go? I'm my, several miles from the nearest road down the trail, and I just knew I was going to die that night. The lightning hit, and if you've ever been around it, lightning can hit and run through tree roots. It can go horizontally. It can go every which way. And I mean, all night long, I don't think I've ever been as frightened in my life. And I remember thinking, if it's going to hit me, just do it. Let's get it over with. I was scared spitless, as they say. Thank God I didn't. I had to go back a day later and get my stuff. It was all water soaked. Thank God. But that was a miracle that I got out of life. I've never been so scared in my life as I was that night. And I've thought about that since then. We, as God's people, are not immune from the storms of life. Old song we used to do when I was in Bible college way long ago down in Waxahachie, Texas. Through the storm, through the night, I'll keep holding on with his hand holding mine. Hope is never gone. <laughs> when I walk the last mile to heaven's land, I'll be led by the master. Till the storm passes over.